Mood tracker time. We're headed to Norman, Oklahoma tonight. I've been thinking on this one. You know, we couldn't do it immediately. A lot of our Oklahoma fans, they wanted us to immediately do a Sooner Mood Tracker. And the Mood Tracker, for those unfamiliar, is just when we take the temperature of the fan base. Instead of, you know, being in preview magazine season or instead of just kind of looking down flyover style, we get right down there in the weeds, granularly with the fan base. What do you think? Well, we couldn't do it because there was coaching turnover. And you know the rule around here. Anytime you got coaching turnover, we just back up. Beep, beep, beep. We give it a little while. We let the dust settle because dust is synonymous with emotions in college football. So we need the emotion to be pushed out of the room and we need a little bit of logic to take its place. I feel like we've entered that period now in Norman around Oklahoma. Brent Venables is the head coach of the Oklahoma Sooners. You can't say that enough. You got to get used to these sorts of things. So I go over to OUinsider.com today, which is our Oklahoma site. And I said, we're doing the mood tracker tonight for Oklahoma. I need you to fill in the blank. My current mood towards OU football is what? And boy, it was only like a couple hours ago. We like, I think we're three pages deep and counting on the board over there. So thank you to OUinsider.com. I think they pinned the thread. That's not something every one of our sites does for me. They pinned the thread for me immediately over there. So I think Brandon Drum, Parker Thune, and those guys, I appreciate that. They were very active. Here, essentially, was the mood amongst the Oklahoma faithful over there. I think they are ready to let the chips fall wherever they may. Now, this is obviously a period of time where I don't think Oklahoma fans feel like they've got it all figured out. I don't think they know definitively in their minds that Brent Venables, he's the guy. He's about to take us right back to the mountaintop. It's not that they have that. They don't have a lot of arrogance about their approach right now. But the reason the mood around Oklahoma football is we're ready to let the chips fall where they may is because you cannot overstate how bad a taste Lincoln Riley's exit left in their mouths. And then you start hearing things and you start getting feedback from this angle and that angle. And it turns out you had a lot of people in Norman, Oklahoma and around the program that may not have thought as highly of Lincoln Riley as all of us outsiders would have been led to believe, but you couldn't say anything while he was there. And really, here's what it amounts to. What it amounts to is that whole dynamic they've had at Arkansas for a while, where they feel like they've got one of their own in Sam Pittman. Maybe they didn't feel like that. They felt like they had a really good coach. They had a good offensive mind, but maybe they never felt like Lincoln Riley was one of theirs. Well, the reason why they're ready to let the chips fall where they may with Brenton Venables is because the moment he landed in Norman, he has felt every bit to Norman, Oklahoma, what Sam Pittman has felt like to Fayetteville, Arkansas. They've got one of theirs. And so when you have that kind of confidence and you claim to not have had it. I'm not there. I'm not on the ground. I'm telling you what Oklahoma fans say. When they haven't had it and they do have it now, there's this comfort factor. There's this weird comfort factor. Even though the guy has not been a head coach a day in his life, there's this comfort factor of we'll let the chips fall where they may, knowing that we're going to do it the way we want it done. Now, here's where you also draw a little bit of confidence. I'd say a lot of confidence if I were an Oklahoma fan. There was not this long, drawn-out, dramatic, chaotic coaching search, even though... Lincoln Riley's departure was kind of sprung on them. Not literally overnight, but kind of overnight. History would tell you they would have been caught with their pants down, figuratively, of course, and they, you know, kind of fumble their way through a coaching search and they don't really do their due diligence and they end up with whoever they end up with. Rinse, repeat a few years later. And that's not what happened. They had their ducks in a row. They knew exactly what they wanted. They knew who embodied that. They waited as long as they needed to wait. And then they went and they got Brent Venables. And Brent Venables came there. And you had a lot of varying degrees of doubt nationally. I haven't really sensed any doubt whatsoever inside there. And that's kind of the same vibe that you got when Ryan Day took over at Ohio State. Kind of, you know, the same vibe that you got somewhat, even when Kirby got the job at Georgia. A lot of people looked around and said, but you could have had him, 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 and him. Uh, for that matter, Napier down at Florida feels the same way. Uh, Florida's the same way Oklahoma is. They're saying, don't worry about it. We got our guy. Ohio State said, we got our guy. Georgia said, we got our guy. Well, here we go. Oklahoma, you got your guy. And they're willing to let the chips fall where they may. Now, I'll tell you what fascinates me personally about Brent Venables at Oklahoma is the whole recruiting dynamic. You know, they, I think, pulled off a minor miracle in holding the class together as well and as highly rated as they did this last cycle. I mean, the takeaway for me hosting the signing day show was when we looked over at the screen and we saw where OU was going to end up, they, over the last several years, there was only one class Lincoln Riley had landed that was ranked higher than the one that Brent Venables and Oklahoma staff, new staff, 
was able to hold together this last cycle. Now, that's not totally indicative of what we can expect down the road. This is where I'm fascinated. Because, you know, we did a show last week where we talked about the changing recruiting dynamics in California, in Florida, and in Texas. Lincoln Riley's now in Southern California. Mario Cristobal's now in Southern Florida. Uh, Sark and Jimbo really lighten it up on the recruiting trail in Texas. Well, here's why I mentioned that. When you go through any of these Oklahoma classes, just like I did earlier, I was reading the states off to Jesse, and I was reading the, the hometowns of all the recruits. There's a lot of Florida. There's a lot of California. And, of course, there's always going to be a lot of Texas. And this is where the rubber's really going to meet the road. I, I don't really care, quite frankly, what Brent Venable shows you on a grease board. I have no doubt in my mind that guy knows football inside and out. Don't doubt it whatsoever. I don't doubt they'll always be able to attract a very quality coaching staff there because it's a rock-solid culture. Oklahoma football has long been viewed, even by outsiders, as one of the most rock-solid cultures in the sport. I don't doubt any of those. And I'm not saying necessarily I doubt what I'm about to say, but this is the biggest mystery about this new staff to me. Are they going to be able to attack those three regions as effectively as they need to, to recruit at the level they need to, to match player for player in conference championship scenarios and maybe even college football playoff scenarios. Because it's not getting easier to recruit in either Florida, well, I guess there's three of them, Florida, Texas, especially South Florida, Texas, and California. The chore is only getting harder, and now you're throwing a new coaching staff into that mix. That is the great unknown for me. And I don't think that Oklahoma fans necessarily disagree with that. They would admit to you they were doing it in the thread over on OU Insider. I've got two Oklahoma buddies I talk with all the time. And they say, hey, I'm not ready to make predictions, but I can tell you one thing for sure. I love the dude we hired. I love Brent Venables. I mean, it's, it's not even spring of his first year. What more can you ask for? 